everyone, welcome to my support vector machines tutorial. Uh, in this video and the coming few videos, I will be explaining the idea and the uh, intuition behind support vector machines. We'll try to uh, see how they work, how they do classification for uh, linearly separable two class uh, classification problems, and then we'll move on to we'll try to cover multi class or we'll try to cover the non linearly separable case. Now, the material in, in this video and the coming few ones is adapted from Professor Syed Syed's website and from this book, Introduction to Information Retrieval. Now, an overview, rather a very quick one, of uh, support vector machines. So SVM stands for support vector machines, as you can guess. They perform classification by finding the hyperplane that maximizes the margin between the two classes. So always remember that the main idea or the main use is to do binary classification and the data is linearly separable. Uh, the way it does that, the way it, it, uh, it does that is by, uh, you can imagine or you can think of it as it's trying to draw the widest channel or the widest street or uh, uh, path or band between the two classes. So if we have two classes, we're just using 2D here because it's easier to draw. This, this is one class, this is uh, the second class, and then we're trying to draw the widest channel as we said before. And usually the classes are positive one for one class or positive examples and minus one for the negative examples, unlike where, uh, when we learned about the perception before. And by the way, here, support vector machines, they're trying to find the best line or the best plane or hyperplane that separates the data, not any line. We learned in Perceptron or LDA, they find a line, any line that separates the data, whereas for support vector machines, they find the best line, the line that separates the data the best, so the furthest from all the classes, right in the middle between the two classes. Now, remember in my, in my videos now, um, if we have two, if in 2D, we're seeking a line that separates the data. In 3D, we're seeking a plane or a surface that separates the data, and if it's more than 3D, then it becomes a hyperplane. I will be using these three interchangeably. So uh, the reason is that whatever we can do in 2D, we have very smart mathematicians, and whatever we do in 2D, we should be able to do it in 3D or more dimensions. And we just focus on two dimensions because it's easy to draw, as you saw here. So that's 2D data, two classes, and then we can uh, draw it and visualize it. Now the intuition behind support of vector machines is as follows. We can uh, uh, consider points or instances in our training data as vectors. So every point becomes a vector of the input variables, of the features. Now what, it, what support vector machines do, they find the two closest points from the two classes. If you look at the diagram here, the two closest points from the two classes. Uh, and these points are said to support or define the best separating plane or hyperplane or line. So th this is why it's called support vector machines because th those closest points, they support or define the uh, separating line or plane as we mentioned before. After that, support vector machines, they draw a line connecting those two points, so the orange line in the figure here. So we find the two closest points, we draw a line betwe between those two points, and then uh, it decides that the best separating line is the line that bisects and is perpendicular to the connecting line. If we go back, the best separating line now is the line that bisects this orange line, i.e. it goes through the middle point of that line and it's perpendicular to it, so the angle there is 90. That's the best separating line. The same applies for a plane, a surface or a hyperplane. Now the process requires some basic knowledge of vectors and vector algebra. Let's try to remind ourselves of some information about vectors. Now as we mentioned before, each point can be considered as a vector of the form P equals it's a vector of the input variables or the features. Now the data set becomes pairs of vectors and classes. So each point, you know, x1 in our data, x1, x2 until xn, any point xi, it becomes a vector now and y, yi, the uh, corresponding class uh, is either minus one or plus one as we mentioned before. So data now is pairs of vectors and classes. A key concept required here is the dot product between two vectors. It's also known as the inner product or the scalar product. Now, the dot product of, of two vectors, let's say we have two vectors A and B, 
I don't worry about the parentheses here and, and square brackets here. It's just I just I'm, try, I'm just trying to explain the concepts. Um, the uh, dot product if a consists of the components a1, a2, and to a n, and b is b1, b2, uh, to b n, then what we do is we multiply the corresponding components uh, a1 times b1, a2 times b2, and then we just sum the result. That's how to compute a dot product of two uh, vectors. Now, again, remember that for vectors, each non-zero vector has a corresponding unit vector. So from a vector, from a non-zero vector, we can have another vector called the unit vector. It has the same direction as that vector, but a magnitude of one. Uh, remember that, and also remember that we can actually compute the distance between uh, a point and a plane. So we can compute the distance of a point to a plane. That's very important and very essential now in support vector machines. And the shortest distance between a point and a hyperplane or a plane is perpendicular to the plane. So the shorter distance between this point and the plane is perpendicular, i.e. the angle there should be zero. Remember we said we can say we can use a line because it's 2D just for uh, uh, us to be able to draw it. Now, support vector machines more formally, um, we're going to claim that we can define a separating hyperplane or a decision hyperplane in terms of an intercept term B and a normal vector W. That vector W is, per is perpendicular to that hyperplane and it's normally uh, referred to as the weight vector. So we want a plane, we can define it but in terms of intercept B and the weight vector W. Now because if we go back now, so if that's our hyperplane then we have we'll have a vector W that's perpendicular to that plane and the intercept now as we learned before it helps us um, uh, it helps us move the plane to the left or to the right and the weights as you will see or as you must have guessed by now they control the slope of that plane uh, to choose amongst all the hyperplanes that are perpendicular to the normal vector we specify the intercept term B so that's why you know a hyperplane can be there or it can be there and the say it's all uh, and both of them can be per perpendicular to the weight vector w but the intercept helps us move the plane from left to right or from right to left until we place it where uh, it best separates the data so the intercept term here is, is quite important and you will notice that we don't actually add it to the weight vector to do the summation as we did in perceptron no we keep it separate because it makes calculations much easier now all the points on the hyperplane satisfy this equation W transpose T times X equals minus B. Now this is again in a product um, and the idea is that any point on the plane here will satisfy this equation that W transpose T that's the vector of weight or the weight vector times X X again here is a vector equals minus B or we can say W transpose T times X plus B equals zero that's the equation of the plane and <coughs> we mentioned that the hyperplane is perpendicular to the normal vector and we represent the training the set now as we mentioned before as pairs of vectors a vector and a class uh, and a class so d equals xi uh, comma uh, yi xi is a vector as a pair of a point and a class label corresponding to it and we mentioned the class label is either minus one or plus one now the linear classifier becomes f of x equals the sine of w transpose d times x plus b and the idea here is that whenever we have a, a point we plug it in the equation so we have the weight vector we have the intercept and we have a new point x we plug it in there we find the dot product and then we add the value of the intercept if the value is positive then the point belongs to uh, the positive class if it's negative then it belongs to the negative class that's where we have the sign we're looking for the sign of the result of plugging a point into this equation so uh, to make things much clearer now the equation of, that's the weight vector perpendicular to our separating plane and the equation becomes w transpose t times x plus p equals y remember that's a dot product I keep saying times but that's dot product now for the positive class uh, wx plus b equals one or more it'll be a positive value for the negative class uh, wx plus b equals minus one or less so 
for the support vectors the value here will be plus one the value here will be minus one but for any other vectors of, of this class it'll be more than plus one if any other vector on from this class will be less than minus uh, one now I'm going to stop here thanks very much for watching in the next video I'll try to explain things further